Now, quickly, before I get into the video, if you could drop a like on it and subscribe to the channel, that would be greatly appreciated. I make content like this pretty much every day and doing that really helps. Anyways, let's get into the video. I just want to start this video by setting the scene. So picture this, you're coming off the worst season in your coaching career. You're coming off pretty much the worst season in the league. You finished the season with a record of 15 wins. Abysmal. Nothing short of abysmal. You've lost the three pillars of your franchise to injury, and it's just been an adjustment period all around. This year is written off. It's 2019, and the Golden State Warriors are rock bottom of the NBA, and people are starting to write them off. I mean, Steph, he missed the whole year. What was he doing? Was he injured, or was he just afraid to play? These are the question marks people asked. Draymond's green. Can he elevate a team again? Is he ever going to be the same player he was? Some people are ignorant enough to think that he just never was a good player and he was just kind of lifted up by the great players around him. Completely untrue, but that's just not what we're going to get into right now. Clay Thompson, he's just missed a whole year with injury. These guys are all getting older and they were just carried by Kevin Durant, wasn't it? That was the only reason they won those championships. These are all the question marks and Steve Kerr now has the job of galvanizing this team. They've got a top draft pick heading into the year, and it looks like they might finally turn things around. All three of their players look ready to come back from injuries. They're underdogs again. This isn't a bad thing for this team. They've been the underdogs before, not just as a team, but personally. Steph Curry, when he was at college, people never thought he'd be the player he was. Draymond Green, Klay Thompson, all of these guys, they were underdogs. So they've been in that situation before, personally and as a team. They're looking towards this season as a redemption year, a year to stamp their authority on the league and prove that they're back. So when you're Steve Kerr, you've got a short turnaround. You've got to make a few moves. You've got to draft a player. You've got to do all of these things and you've got to embed them into a system that is quite complex. A system that has won them championships, but also won hard to understand for players that might not have the highest IQ. But the thing is, You've got your three best players. You've got three players that have played in this system for a decade. They're going to be perfectly fine. You've got Draymond can teach the rookie the ropes. Steph will teach whoever's behind him the ropes. Klay Thompson is just going to do his thing. So there's not too many concerns over this system and no one really questions it because they know what it's been able to do for this team in the past. But now you lose Klay Thompson to an injury. That's rough. Now all of a sudden you've lost one of your three best players and people are starting to seriously doubt if this team can get back to its best. And then comes the season. They've now had to trade for Kelly Oubre, a player who gets to spend about a week in training camp with the team, learning the new system, learning the ropes. You've then also had to draft a new rookie, James Wiseman, someone who didn't even get to play in preseason at all. But it's not done yet, because now Draymond Green, the player that you thought would be able to teach these guys the system while on the floor, he'd be able to demonstrate from the front as a defensive-minded player and someone who can create for others offensively, just someone who uses his voice, he's just great as a player and as a leader. Now all of a sudden, that system that you were building up to, uh, well, you've lost two of your best players, James Wiseman, their number one prospect, and the guy who's come in with so much promise hasn't even got to play with them yet. So now all of a sudden you're Steve Kerr. You've been thinking about this system that you want to play, the system that was always going to be the one you'd go with because that's what's worked for them in the past. You've got Steph, Clay, and Draymond, and then Wiggins has played with them before as well, so he knows the ways. And then you just have to implement one rookie into the starting lineup, and look, he can learn because you've got all those guys around him. Now, all of a sudden, you've had to trade for Kelly Oubre, who gets about a week to embed himself into a new system. James Wiseman doesn't get to play a game at all for the Warriors. Draymond Green now goes out injured, as does Eric Paschal, who comes back underdone. And you've got a number of guys that have spent a lot of their careers in the G League coming off the bench. So I've just set the scene, if you're still following, I think you get what I'm saying. They've had a lot of injuries. They've had a lot of rotation. They've had a lot of things that just couldn't be planned for just over a month ago when Klay Thompson suffered a season-ending injury. Just over a couple of weeks ago when Draymond Green was ruled out of the first few games of the season, or when James Wiseman was declared that he wouldn't be able to play any preseason games. You've now gone from having a roster full of players that know your system and know their roles that they can play, and then just having one or two players that you just have to bring along. A very reasonable task, something that you could definitely do, to now having a number of different players in your starting lineup learn a new system and try to adjust to a new system after getting very limited time to do so. But it's Steve Kerr's fault. It's the coach of the Golden State Warriors because he should have predicted that all of these things should have happened and he should have had another system in place because it's not like he was planning the season to have Klay Thompson, Draymond Green and Stephen Curry, one of the best trios of all time, and then have Andrew Wiggins in the team who played the back half of the season with the Warriors and then bring alongside a rookie in James Wiseman. It's not like he was planning for that for months on ends. It's not like that was what everything was leading up to, and then it all unraveled in the space of a month. But it's Steve Kerr's fault for not having a different system in place. 
Yes. So now I've told you why the system might not be working and why the unfair criticisms of Steve Kerr going with the system that once helped the Warriors reach the highest goal with different players that might not fit that role in that system as well as other players they've had in the past. Now I've said why that criticism is completely unfair because he just hasn't had a chance to adjust and this is what he was working up to for several months and he was expecting to have a full healthy roster full of players that know their roles. That's why it's unfair to criticize him. But another reason is, the thing is, the system's not actually that much of an issue, is it? Because I'm going to look through some stats and I'm going to give you some stats that just tell me that they're getting the shots that they want to get and they're just not making it. It's that simple. When it comes down to the game of basketball, you can get 100 open shots if you don't have anyone that can make a shot outside of one player on the floor, and even that one player is struggling more than he ever has in his career in Stephen Curry, then what can you do as a coach? Can you stand at the three-point line and try to knock down shots yourself? Because that's probably a better option than having Kelly Oubre brick shots. Maybe Steve Kerr needs to get in the game. That's a fair criticism. Steve Kerr should suit up and try to knock down some jump shots. That's about the only fair criticism I'm going to take of Steve Kerr at the moment. I'm not saying he's a perfect coach, but I'm just saying the criticisms that he is receiving don't really make any sense and they don't add up. So let's look through the numbers first. What do the Warriors pride themselves on? What have they been so good at over the years? Creating three-point opportunities. They love to move the ball around. They love to drive and kick. They love to come off screens, pin downs, everything you can do to create open looks from three. I mean, how many times in transition have we seen them have an opportunity to take a layup and take a three instead? But enough of that. Let's just look at the stats, something that just can't be undisputed. Let's look at open threes. That's a margin of around four to six feet from your defender. So it's a pretty comfortable shot that you should be making. And a number of teams make it over 40% on average. That's the kind of shot you're looking at. Well, the Golden State Warriors attempt the 13th most open threes, which suggests their ball movement is above average in that regard. They're getting enough open looks to the point where they should be knocking down about league average at least in terms of open threes. But the thing is, they're hitting 25% of their open threes. So they're moving the ball to the point where they're getting the 13th most open looks from three, but their percentage is the second worst in the NBA, only above the Kings. But the thing is, the Kings are the first in terms of wide open threes. Why there's such a discrepancy? It's early in the season. But the Kings aren't hitting their open threes. They're nailing their wide open threes. So that's the reason why the Kings are having a good start to the season. But let's talk about wide open threes because that is a shot that you should be hitting. You're hitting 25% of open threes. You've got to hit at least 35% of your wide open threes. Like, come on, the defender's nowhere near you. You've had all the time in the world to set up and hit your shot. What's stopping you from making the three? Well, the Warriors are averaging the seventh most wide open attempt threes, which is very good. If you're top 10 in terms of how many wide open threes you're getting, that just suggests to me that your ball movement is good because what it's saying is you're getting that many open looks, wide open looks. Shots that you should be taking and making. I don't care what kind of team you have, what kind of players you have in this kind of modern day NBA. That's what you're looking for. That's what every team wants to do. Some people to a lesser degree, but every team wants wide open looks from three. That is how the game is played. But we're going to have to look at them again because they're 29th in the league in this department. So they're getting above league average, significantly above league average in terms of how many good looks they're getting from three on both the wide open and open threes, and they're second last in both departments. Try to pin that on Steve Kerr. I just don't know how you can do it. Try to pin that on Stephen Kerr, the coach of the Golden State Warriors. Because that's what I'm hearing a lot of slander towards. Steve Kerr just can't coach a team without all-star players. Steph Curry can't play without all-star teammates. Well, no one can play when your team can't make a wide open or an open three. It's that simple. And did he have a choice in terms of having to play guys like Kelly Oubre and Andrew Wiggins who aren't notoriously great three-point shooters? No, because guys like Clay Thompson got injured. But even still, Andrew Wiggins, Kelly Oubre, Steph Curry hasn't had the best year from three. Even open threes, he's not shooting well. All of these guys, they always shoot better than they have. This is their worst year of shooting. And the numbers suggest that it's got nothing to do with the offense that's being run. It's got something to do with them not being able to make a shot. I don't know if the rims are double rims over in Golden State, over in California. Maybe that's the case. Maybe they need to inspect the rims because at this point in time, that's kind of the only thing I can think of. But we're not done with the stats. We've got to keep going and we've got to keep showing why the Warriors are ultimately struggling because this is the reason. They can't knock down open shots. I'm just going to quickly brush through the two-point attempts. They average the 10th most wide open two-point attempts. Again, showing they've got good ball movement. They're getting wide open attempts and their percentage is the third worst in the NBA. Like you can't make this stuff up. 
bottom three, wide open threes, open threes, wide open twos, and top half in all of those creation aspects. So they're creating the shots, they're not hitting them. Like, what else can you say? But I'm not even done. Let's talk about finishing at the rim. They've got the second worst field goal percentage finishing at the rim. And maybe you could blame that on Steve Kerr. But when you look at what they're doing outside of the rim, when you look at what they're doing with wide open twos and threes and open threes and twos, it just suggests to me that they just can't finish at all. Maybe this is Steve Kerr's fault. Maybe he's just got into their head and he's telling them to stop shooting, to stop hitting shots. Is that why Steve Kerr should be blamed? Look, I'm not here to say Steve Kerr should be completely exempt from criticism because I think everyone should on this team, even Steph Curry, who I've publicly said at, in the past was the best NBA player in the league. So I'm a big fan of him if you need to question that. But at the same time, he hasn't hit his open threes. It just hasn't been falling for him. He's had some great games and he's led them to their two wins, but he's also missed open threes. So it's not just been hit. it's not just been his teammates. He hasn't had the best start to the season possible. And their defense hasn't been great either. Another thing that I thought Draymond could come in and fix in 17 minutes after coming off an injury, was he going to make that big of a difference? I probably pinned too much hope on him being that kind of difference maker, but I've still got hope that maybe over the season, as these guys learn how to play in a new system, as Draymond gets back to his best and starts leading from the front defensively and offensively, and as Steph gets his shooting back to where we know it can be and where it has always been, Kelly Oubre starts to not be the Ben Simmons of small forwards, even worse. Just the worst shooter in NBA history at this point in time. One shot he's made from 25 three-point attempts. And a lot of them have been wide open. Open, wide open, you pick your poison. Either one is poison for the Warriors when Kelly Oubre's got the ball in his hands behind the arc. I just, the slander that Steve Kerr's got saying he's not a good coach, he can't teach, he can't coach without all-star teammates. Well, he's had to come in after having planned to have Clay Thompson, Draymond Green, and Stephen Curry and run an offense with that in mind, he's then had to change his team completely. And I think he's done a good job because all of the numbers suggest to me they're getting the right shots. I've seen the games actually as well with my own eyes and I've seen them moving the ball. I've just got a question before I end the video because it's been a bit of a longer one. All of these analysts, all of these people blaming Kerr for this What's the solution? Do you just not take three-point shots or do you just try to get to the rim because they're the second worst shooting team at the rim in the league? They can't hit wide open twos. They're the third worst team at hitting those. What's the answer? Do you just take contested shots from now on? Is that the answer? You wait for someone to close out? Maybe that's the answer. I don't know the answer. I just know the reason they're struggling is not because of their system or their coach. It's because they can't knock down wide open shots and their defense, he's got to take some blame for that because their defense just hasn't really been great at all. But at the same time, their offense, I'm not blaming him at all.